I'm Sean Carruthers and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. This series we're taking a look at HTC's HD7 phone running Windows Phone 7. This episode we're going to talk about the settings menu. Now of course with every smartphone you have a bunch of settings that you can change on the phone to determine how the phone works and the HD7 from HTC is no different. To get to the settings on this we're going to hit on the start menu button at the bottom of the screen and then tap on the right arrow and then down to settings. Tap on that and it'll open up the settings for the phone. You see on the settings screen here, it looks a little bit like the Android settings screen, but of course it has a Windows Phone 7 touch to it. By default, you'd be on the system settings, but you can swipe left or right to get to the application specific settings. Under the system settings, the first option is for ringtones and sounds. You can turn your ringer on or off here, set whether the phone vibrates, and choose specific sounds for specific events. Tap on one of these items to scroll through the various options that you have here. There's a preview icon over to the side to hear what it sounds like, and if you want to select it, just tap on the item itself. Now we'll hit the back button to go back into the settings menu. The theme option allows us to change background colors and the accent colors to suit our mood. Next up is the airplane mode. This will turn off all the wireless functions like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and cellular while still allowing us to use the phone itself while we're on an airplane. Next up is Wi-Fi settings. We can configure a new network if we want to from here. Next up we have the Bluetooth submenu. If we want to use Bluetooth headsets with our phone, we can turn on Bluetooth here and then set it up below. Under email and accounts, we can configure our Windows Live account, we can set up other types of email accounts, we can even integrate our Facebook account here. Under the lock and wallpaper, we can change our wallpaper here to something else in our photos library or our wallpaper stash. We can also change the screen timeout here to a longer or shorter period if it times out quicker or longer than we'd like. If you're worried about your privacy in this area, you can also set up your phone to require a password to access it. So every time you turn it on, it'll require a password to gain access to the phone. Under location, you can turn off your location services completely, which will disable GPS and things like Foursquare, the map, other things like that. So if you want to still use the GPS for those things, you might want to leave this one on. Under cellular, we get some information on the network we're currently using, and we can set up whether we're going to use the data connection, data roaming, or 3G connection. We can also manually select our cell network if we want to change to a different one. We'll do so at the bottom. You can also manually enter an APN if we need to custom configure any settings here. Under date and time, we can change our settings if we want to. We can manually enter the settings if we don't want to get them directly from the network, or we can set it between 12 and 24 hour time. Under the brightness, we have the option to turn off auto brightness and set our own level. Under the keyboard, we can change the type of keyboard we're using to different types from around the world, and we can select a few options for autocorrect or text suggestions. Under region and language, we have the option to change where we're located and change the formats that are typically associated with our region. Next, under ease of access, we can turn on TTY or TDD mode. Under the speech menu, we can custom configure how and when the phone uses speech recognition. Under Find My iPhone, we can turn on options for tracking the phone at windowsphone.live.com if we're worried about losing it. It's worth noting that turning this on may use up extra battery life. Under the phone update option, it gives us control over how we see information on whether there are updates available for the phone's firmware. Under the about option, we can get more information on the phone by tapping through. Or if we want to wipe out the phone completely and start from scratch, we can hit reset your phone and then it'll put us back to factory settings. Lastly, under the system settings, under feedback, we can choose whether the phone will automatically submit our user information to Microsoft to help improve the user experience down the road in future generations of the phone. Swiping over to the application settings, we have a number of app specific settings, such as whether to automatically connect to Xbox Live, whether Internet Explorer uses cookies, defaults to mobile or desktop sites by default, and it'll give us an option to clear the history here. It'll determine whether or not the map application uses the GPS information automatically. We can also clear our map history from here. We can determine whether we get SMS delivery confirmation. We can specify whether we can connect to the Zoom store automatically for video and music purchases. There's a submenu here for configuring how all of your mobile office applications work. Under the people options, there are settings here for how the phone displays and sorts your contacts. Under the phone options, you can select a few options, including how your number appears and whether or not you set call forwarding on or off. Under pictures and camera, you can choose if GPS is used, if the photos are auto-uploaded. Under radio, it allows you to set your region. And the search allows you to use your location, get auto-suggestions from Bing, and delete your history. Let's look at settings on the Windows Phone 7 running on HTC's HD7 phone. For more information on how to use the HD7 and Windows Phone 7, you can see the other parts in the series, and you can see the show notes for this and the other parts in the series at butterscotch.com.